It's week six in the EFL. Things are starting to take shape. Let's find out more on EFL TV. For Future Gully Holden and HSV, your local community dealer. The EFL's number one lady, Lauren Wood, joins me again on EFL TV. G'day, Loz. Great to be back, half. Always a pleasure. Now, concussion is a big talking point in footy at the moment. There was a Four Corners expose, an investigative report on Monday night on the ABC, which was very interesting. Got tongues wagging. What are the EFL doing about concussion? That's right. It certainly was very interesting, and we've seen lots of debate happening uh, around the topic, I suppose. And it's something that the EFL has been on to for quite a while now. And there's always been a lot of material distributed to clubs, and mm. and particularly the trainers. So we've got we have got over 250 trainers registered with the Trainers Association that are out there every weekend uh, in the white gear and helping all of our players out. Yep. Um, and they're of course aware of all the guidelines and and everything that goes along with it. So as you probably would know, playing uh, quite a bit of footy in your time, there's nothing worse. They're getting knocked out or, or getting a right. little bit of the wobbles through the concussion. So um, we have distributed all that information to clubs. Um, and we also just wanted to let everyone know uh, what, I guess, the stance is. So we have adopted all of the AFL policies and guidelines in regards to protection of the head and all that goes along with that. Okay, so um, I guess if you're after any informa- in more information, I should say, um, just check out with your club trainers. They should have plenty of material on hand, uh, whether it's in the trainer's room or, or in their booklets or anything like that, um, to give you if you are worried about what's going to happen. And if you if you do get concussed, do you go back on or that sort of thing? Yep. Um, or you can contact the league. Is it something that uh, the league sees as an issue or just following the, the uh, lead set by the AFL? I wouldn't say it's an issue, but I mean, it's one of those things that uh, you certainly want to have all bases covered. Yep. Um, obviously, the welfare of the players is at the forefront, so uh, I'd like to get on the front foot and let everyone know about it. Chat to your trainers if you want to find out more info or contact the league for more details on the uh, stance from the AFL on concussion. Now, the Caravan of Courage, speaking of concussion, I reckon a few of them might have been <laughs> whacked around the head in their times, just listening to them. The Caravan of Courage, where do we head to for 98.1 Radio Eastern's oh, Game of the Round? They go all right, don't they're they? They're terrific, they're right. being uh, there was a, There was I guess a plethora of games, I suppose you could you could say this weekend. There's a couple of local derbies floating around, but uh, oh, yes. they've gone for the grand the Divi Four Grand Final rematch. Yes. that's actually happening in Divi Three. So we know last year that Heathmont and the Glenny Hawks had that thrilling draw in the Division Four Grand Final. So yeah. they were both promoted, of course, with Park Orchards coming back in. So they'll be facing off at HE Parker Reserve at Heathmont this weekend. So you can catch all the action live from one o'clock on ninety eight point one Radio Eastern. And, of course, as we said last week, live on the EFL website, fully video streamed, all the bells and whistles. And people are loving that too. I'm having people that I know watching the games, even though they don't support the clubs. They've got nothing else to do on a Saturday. They get the computer on, the laptop out, and they watch the game live on their computer. Yeah, it's not bad, particularly when it's cold. So light the fire. And uh, it seems to be getting quite a lot of hits too. It's doubling ours. So I think we need to do something about that. That's all right. They come to us to get to that. That's how they do it. Yeah, they speak right. the word from <laughs> That's how it rolls in TV land. Now, the Future Gully hold, they've got a big sale on. They're great supporters of EFL TV. They've got a big sale on. Yeah, they are. They've jumped on our, uh, on our bandwagon, I suppose you could say, this year. And it's great to have them on board. They're having their first ever to build a deal sort of sale. Oh. Um, that's happening this weekend. So it goes, for, deal. it goes for just three days, uh, of course, headed up by Brett Field and all the team down at Ferntree Gully Holden. So uh, there's plenty of information. There'll be plenty ticking across the screen as we speak, I'd imagine. <laughs> plenty on the EFL website, the Facebook, Twitter, and also in the footy record this week, which you can pick up at the gate for just $2.50. Look after those that look after your competition, Ferntree Gully Holden there with their designer deal sale. Loz, great to catch up with you. We'll see you next week. See you then. Special guest time again on EFL TV, former AFL superstar and Mulgrave superstar too, before he went to the ammos like me. Not a bad decision, by the way. Lukey Ablett is here. G'day, Luke. How are you, mate? Mate, done very well, thank you. Great to have you on board as part of EFL TV. You work for the AFL these days, and the AFL have got an initiative and a program called Taking the Tackle. Mm -hmm. Explain that to me. So Taking the Tackle is a DVD resource, which as of a couple of weeks ago, we sent to 800 community football clubs around the state in Victoria. Uh, it's basically taking the AFL's Respect and Responsibility program to every community, every senior community club in Victoria, trying to spend, spread messages of respect towards women and you know, trying to prevent violence as it happens in the community. And the AFL have jumped on board this, as we would expect? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, Rob Sharp has been really supportive. We've had a few meetings with him over the past couple of years while it's been developed so that, so that the league and also clubs within the league know that it's coming. And yeah, as I said, they've been really supportive and as of a couple of weeks ago, it got sent around. It's obviously been a big push from the AFL to with this campaign in respect to responsibility. How big an issue is it in the community? It's you know surprisingly big. You know, I remember when I first started the AFL, you probably don't realise how big of an issue it is. But we know that one in three women in Australia have experienced 
some form of violence at some point in their life. Um, you know, around you know five hundred thousand women every year experience some form of violence, and you know some of the other stats. You know, it's a leading cause of death, disability, and illness in young women. You know, so more than alcohol, more than illicit drugs, more than wow. obesity. So it kind of gets sometimes swept under the carpet as as far as an issue in Australia goes. But yeah, it's it's a really big issue. That's a bit spooky. Um, mm. And when we think about violence against women, particularly, we we often think about physical violence. But there are other 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 ways. Uh, how do you define violence against women? Well, violence, against, as we're speaking about it, is about family violence. So obviously, as you mentioned, physical violence is really easy to see. Sexual violence is really easy to see. But yeah. the other behaviours that fall under that are yeah. emotional and psychological abuse, you know, constantly putting people down, financial, controlling money, um, you know, pet abuse can come into it as well. And what it, what it generally revolves around is power, control, yeah. instilling fear in women so that, so that the man gets them to act as they want and... You know, as I said, it's a leading cause of illness in, in Australia and young women. And a lot of that's around depression, anxiety, some mental health issues that come from just having their self-esteem chipped away constantly and systematically by their partner yep. and can end up being really damaging for women. And, and what are you hoping to achieve with this program, Taking the Tackle? Well, what it does is it gives us a chance to spread messages of respect wider than we ever have before. You know, it was funded by the state government. So this year it's gone to every club in Victoria. Over the next 12 months, it'll go to every club in Australia. And it gives us a chance to spread those messages further and wider than we ever have before. Yeah. The DVD features ex-AFL players. It's narrated by Russell Roberts and features some current players. So hopefully by using those guys, it becomes more relevant. And, the, you know, the young guys who are looking at it, watching the DVD has some uh, some figures that they can relate to and respect and you know hopefully take some of the messages on board. What's been the response so far from the people that have seen the DVD and the clubs that have got involved? It's really good. Um, I think a lot of people, as, as we alluded to, a lot of people don't realise how big of an issue it is in Australia and for something that's quite heavy, you know, we're talking about family violence and sexual assault, you know, they're pretty heavy kind of topics and but the great thing is it gives young men a chance to talk about things that they wouldn't otherwise get to talk about. Yeah, you know, what, is, what is a respectful relationship? How do you ne- negotiate sex and consent and all those kind of things? And it gives, it gives young men a chance to have the conversation that they wouldn't otherwise get to have a, get the chance to talk about. Okay, so every club will get that DVD, is that right? Yeah, every club, every senior club in Victoria should have got it within the last week or so. Yep. All right, well, watch that with your boys and uh, let's make sure we get on track with this and, and reduce the incidents because that is uh, some of those stats are absolutely alarming. So good luck, mate, with the, the program. Good thanks, luck mate. with your work at the AFL and uh, great to see you again. Cheers, thanks. Luke Abler, taking the tackle. Okay, let's get our teeth into some footy action now and go through the highlighted game of each division in the EFL. We do that with the media manager, Ben Waterworth. Benny, welcome back. Hello, Half. Uh, you know, Dennis Pagan used to say that a draw was like dancing with your sister. Well, yes. how do you describe when Doncaster East and Donval, both the under-19s and seniors, both had draws last weekend? How do you describe that? Well, that would be two out of the three triplets dancing with two out of the three triplets of another family. But the other triplet, the road triplet, has had a good dance with somebody else in the Chockeys. <laughs> They've done all right. I would have described it like uh, probably da- dancing with the grandma after 21st speeches, but we'll leave that. To- I like your theory probably a little bit better. Oh, I wouldn't be going anywhere near the grandma. Just <laughs> okay, fair enough, Ben. I'm not sure what you're doing in your spare time, Ben, <laughs> but that's not cool. Let's look at Divi 1 this week. And while we get away from this, East Ringwood taking on Knox. Bernie Deneen doing great things at East Ringwood. But has anyone scored against Knox this year? No one has scored against Knox, <laughs> Uh, they're doing a fantastic job at the moment. The best defensive team in the competition. Having said that, half Knox are the worst attacking team in the competition. They actually have uh, scored the least amount of points out of any Division One club. Okay. Look, I reckon at the moment East Ringwood's uh, ladder position doesn't do justice to their season so far. They've had a, a really good past fortnight. Defeated Knox, uh, not Knox, uh, of course, defeated Noble Park and took it up to Scoresby last weekend. Of course, the top team in Division One only lost by two points. So they are coming. Look, it's a bit of a case here because East Ringwood are actually the best attacking team in the competition. So you've got the uh, irresistible force in East Ringwood against the immovable object in Knox. And I reckon the force is going to be with East Ringwood this weekend. Half They're due for a victory. They'll knock off Knox, I reckon. Okay, the Roo is too powerful. Forward of centre for Knox. We'll see how that unfolds. Big game. Speaking of big games, Divi 2, Montrose v Mural Bark. Yes. Montrose, we get to find out how serious they are against the 5-zip Barkers. Yeah, the best team in the competition, Mural Bark at the moment. And Montrose as you said, great opportunity for them to test themselves. When we went down to Montrose a couple of weeks ago, the guys on the gate who uh, collect the uh, all the money for the records Did and all they? that jazz, 
I do have a season pass, but I, I, I did get through. No, I do pay through Doesn't my through pay. my time through the AFL. Disgusting. The guys on the gate told me that Adam Cook is the best thing since sliced bread. Apparently, yeah, right. now he's kicked 17 goals to start off the year. He's in very good form. Mm-hmm. Been a great pickup for Montrose, so he's going to be a key this weekend. Mm-hmm. I just get the feeling though that, that Moorabark they're living up to all the preseason hype at the moment, and there's no reason why they can't keep on uh, can't keep that going for the next couple of weeks. So I reckon they'll win this weekend, and it sets up a, a mouth watering style uh, clash against. Roville in a couple of weeks time because most likely those teams will be undefeated so watch out for that game Murrelbach to win this weekend Murrelbach over Montrose that will be an absolute gem that one Divi 3 Ringwood take on Baronia at that Jubilee now Ringwood almost got over the line against North Ringwood the Mighty Saints last week so they're coming they're doing okay ever since Josh Tui has uh, taken over a couple of weeks ago half the Redbacks are looking very very nice at the moment a couple of their younger players playing very good footy at the moment Patrick Bur- Burmeister is one of those got a leader young gun nomination for his best on grand performance last weekend kick three goals as well so watch out for him Look, it's, it's a big test, though, against Baronia. I understand a, a fair few of the uh, North Ringwood, uh, the Ringwood tall forwards at the moment are are not going to play, uh, will, will not play this weekend. So that's not uh, that's not a great time for them. And against that Baronia defence that has the likes of Jess Moore and the Allison boys who are in very good form at the moment, I think Baronia will show their class and get a victory on the weekend. But Ringwood are in very good form. Watch out for them for the rest of the season. Okay. Baronia to get the chockies there in that game. Divi 4, last game we'll focus on here on EFL TV. We've got Fern Trigalli taking on Forest Hill. We've got uh, Hayden Lovett and, and uh, my man Aitken just yes. doing great things for the Eagles. Yeah, Ricky Aitken doing my fantastic man. stuff. They've, they've, they've come back uh, after a, a very slow start to the season. Of course, they played the Basin and South Belgrave in the first two rounds. So they started the season with two losses. And uh, look, I think probably people have sort of looked past that and uh, now. So I get the feeling that Fern Gully are now on their way up. We saw Forest Hill firsthand last weekend against Park Orchards. They were reasonably impressive as well. The Shoulders boys doing fantastic work down there. Michael Cardamone's a, an elusive player to watch out for as well. Watch out for him possibly in the SEN Division 4 team of the year a little bit later on in the year. But if the Fern Gully Eagles want to really sort of push their finals case or a case to get into the finals and get into that top five as soon as they can, mm-hmm. they'll win this game. So I get the feeling the Eagles will be able to get the chocolates against the Zebras on the weekend. Excellent, excellent. Now, we've got the uh, replay of the Divi 4 Grand Final in Divi 3 this year. Yes. I said that before. Yes. I just want Glenn Waverley. How'd that happen again? Of course, Park Orchards came into the competition this year into Division ah, so 4. so two went up. That's right, so two went up. So oh. uh, both worthy of going up into Division 3 as well, and they've both started the season in uh, good form as well, so it should be a fantastic game. Looking forward to getting out there with the uh, the Radio Eastern team. And it's the Caravan of Courage out there, in the 98.1 Radio Eastern game of the round. Benny, great to see you, mate. Good to see you, Half. We'll see you next week. Have a great weekend in the EFL land. You too as well, and we'll see you next week on EFL TV. 